Lavender and I met when we were students here together, our first year. We were a lot like you and your friend Sage, actually. What? How? Totally inseparable. This was our first everything hours, dorks. Mom looks so fierce in the uniform. Is, is that your sister? It's me, actually. You are a girl? <laughs> I'm transgender. Anyway, how is your sex life? I'm gonna lay this out as simply as possible, so that no one misses my actual point here. The writers refuse to share vital information about the world and the story. The exposition in this show is either non-existent or scattershot at best. The team behind this animated series don't have the willingness or the talent or the time or the budget to actually explain anything, to tell a functioning story. But what they do have time for is explain the concept of transgenderism. I don't know that word. I was born into a female body, but it wasn't the right body for me. So I used new magic to change it. Cool. You can do that? I is that kind of transformation magic permanent? I take a potion once a month to keep the spell active, which lets me be the real me. Now that we are all on the same page about what is happening here, I'm gonna explain why this whole exchange is absolutely dreadful. Caraway gives a photo album to Rosemary, and unless Caraway thinks Rosemary is an utter retard, he knows that she is gonna notice something is off about the pictures. He knows that Rosemary will ask about it, and he knows he will get the opportunity to share his stunning and brave life choice with this 14-year-old girl. Caraway purposefully leads the conversation into including his body morphing magic. This fact alone elevates this conversation from awkwardness into the realm of insidiousness. I'll state this plainly, because there is no reason to dress up something this obvious. It is not the job of a random member of the education staff to discuss matters of sex, sexuality, or anything having to do with genitals with their underage students. Every person who advocates for this kind of behavior is a groomer. Either sexual or ideological variety, bonus points if both, Caraway is a self-centered deviant crossing the boundaries of common decency in leaps and bounds. And the same goes for the creators as well. And on further note, the fact this explanation exists in the show in the first place, regardless of who is in the room to hear it, is utterly absurd. Think about it, who is this show made for? A wider topic would be to whom the average product at Crunchyroll is made for, but for the sake of this conversation, let's say this show is made for mature audiences. The trigger warning at the beginning would indicate as such. So if this show is made for mature audiences, older teens and adults, then by all logic, they would not need this explanation. Is there truly anyone who doesn't know what a trans person is? But if we are being perfectly honest, we should note that vast portions of the anime and cartoon viewing populace are underage. The material itself is certainly aimed at underdeveloped minds. Let's be real here, a goddamn trigger warning isn't gonna keep the kiddiewinks away. And any adult in the industry who tries to argue that they aren't aware of this fact is a filthy liar. So yes, the creators are trying to sell their propaganda to kids as well. Adult people are free to do as they wish, as long as it doesn't affect the lives of anyone else. But if you try to infect growing minds with issues they have no way of properly handling, indoctrinating them, experimenting on them, using them as pawns for your social change, then we have a problem. Cross that line and be prepared to be called what you are. Self-interested, 
degenerate subhuman trash. This is only fair. And if we examine this scene from pure writing point of view, it doesn't fare any better. Nothing about this is natural. Rosemary's okay cool reaction to this huge concept being added to her vocabulary is ridiculous. In reality, there would be a lot more questions and questioning of the entire concept. Nothing about this back and forth flows like an actual conversation. The dialogue is as awful as ever, it's like a rehearsed PSA between two people, suddenly popping up in the midst of a larger conversation. No one communicates like this. It's a very modern reflection of the world. Our characters are really diverse, our cast is really diverse, and that's one of the things that excited me the most about it. You hear this type of sentiment often from modern creatives like this. Diverse characters are the way to go, which, if translated to normal people speak, means anything other than white heterosexual men. Because the existence of white heterosexual men in prominent roles in fiction is... a problem. Because... reasons. I'm not insane, so I don't know. In any case, the people fixated on race and sex and sexuality, identity of any kind, are free to make whatever they like. Obviously. Do what you want, express yourself. Make every character you want into transvestite, pansexual, queer, black, Asian, with Tourette's, or whatever the fuck the flavor of the month happens to be for you. And hey, if the story is good, then I'm all up for it. After all, there really are no inherently bad ideas, only bad execution. And following from that, to the entire writing staff, I say this. This was your chance. You had your very own story, a clean slate, you were free to create anything. Crunchyroll had given you the platform, all the opportunity and publicity you could want. Now was the time to bring in your A-game, to showcase your writing chops, to blow everyone away with your array of wonderfully diverse, fully fledged characters, meaningful dialogue, and a gripping narrative. Well, here's the end result. This here is definitive proof that people who are obsessed with stuff like this, who live just to whine about how there's never enough this or that type of people represented in pop culture, are incapable of writing anything worth shit. They are bad at their job, pure and simple. This is the one thing they claim to care about, and yet they have no idea how to integrate these themes and character traits into the narrative. A character just declares, I'm trans by the by, instead of coming up with a clever way to weave the fact into the story, or just leaving it to be inferred by the audience, we get this. I'm trans. This is what qualifies as writing to these people. This is the best they can come up with. These people are worthless. They have no love nor passion for storytelling. All they care about is having character type X on screen and making sure everyone knows it. Shallow, self-absorbed, insignificant people playing as authors. Their minds, souls, and hands are incapable of creating anything worth investment. Bottom line, this forced exposition about commonly known concepts exists in this show solely as representation, and to normalize said representation. And even at that, the show fails miserably. The trans experience in the show is turned into an absolute joke. Just like with every other instance of magic, the spell to spontaneously sprout a dick or vagina doesn't carry any kind of cost. It is even implied that it can be reversed just as easily, anytime the person so wishes. This kind of representation is completely detached from reality. It ignores all psychological, biological, and societal implications, 
and makes the entire thing tantamount to changing one's socks. It's just that you came out the wrong sex and ruined everything. Now grow a penis to get lost. The fact that Caraway is so eager to announce his own trans existence is absolutely mental. You see, I'm a thinking person, a logical being, so I have to ask, isn't the whole point of transitioning to be viewed as the chosen sex? And not as a person who used to be the opposite sex? Shouldn't the end goal of the whole trans experience be not to identify as trans man or a trans woman, but rather simply male or female? But therein lies the paradox. To these people, creators like this, it's never about achieving anything. It's never about arriving to the logical end point. Actual progress. It's about perpetually remaining as a fringe identity so that one may feel special and reap the benefits in this crazy modern world of ours. This is representation in the most shallow form. It's identity as a fashion statement. Fucking disgusting. And truly, who would ever want to be represented by this kind of person? A self-important, talentless, rash, idiotic manlet who never takes responsibility for his own fuck-ups. Oh, wait! Do you know anything about transition magic? <laughs> A couple of brief words to cap this thing off. Considering that my videos are intended for mature audiences, as dictated by YouTube's creator guidelines, I am sure we can all be rational adults about this. My mind is my own, my views are my own, and I expect the same from each of my viewers. Far as I'm concerned, everyone is welcome here, for as long as you feel like staying. Jokes and chaps aside, I will never advocate for bigotry, but I will also call out things for what they are. As you might have noticed, I aim to have a bit more nuance than the average entertainment reviewing Joe, and focus on things that actually matter. Small things, like the cohesion of storytelling itself, regardless of social issues and politics. In truth, I would never go out of my way to discuss this shit, my interests lie elsewhere, but I have decided to come through and critique this show in what many would call excessive detail, so that includes this scene also. My standards are consistency and common sense. Every story and every author has the exact same opportunity to either impress or disappoint, and I will treat each issue with brutal honesty. This I promise you. My problem is never the existence of character X, or the fact that their creator belongs to a certain group. My problem is flat characterization and retarded storytelling. Amazing, I know. If you have thoughts, share them in the comment section below, that's what it's there for. And as always, a huge thanks to each of you for listening till the end, for liking, subbing, commenting, it's all appreciated. And a special thank you goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thanks to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you would like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.